Okay guys, shit is getting real. <laughs> uh, so we are getting ready for baby boy. This video is gonna be about five exercises you can do to start getting ready for um, your labor, making it a little bit easier on you and easing some of the pain that the third trimester gives you because there's a lot of pain. I'm ready for baby boy to be out of my body. <laughs> um, but this is the birth room. We're gonna have the pool here. Got a bunch of seats available for people to be sitting around. Um, we had to get a mattress topper. Our queen size uh, guest bedroom bed kind of needed like a topper because it's an old bed. So we're like, ah, we'll buy a topper and we'll keep it down here until I can work my way back upstairs in my bedroom because she wants me staying down here for a couple days, maybe even a week to not move too much. So it'll be easier um, for me to give you stuff from the it's kitchen. It's easier to feed us because we do a lot of sleeping afterwards and just recovery. I shouldn't be moving too much. So being down here where he doesn't have to go all the way upstairs to get me something or check on me, is just gonna be easier. So we have our little setup. I'm gonna be up down here. Paul's gonna be there. Oh my God, it's gonna happen so so. So like, we're ready. If he comes on the due date, which no one thinks he's coming on the due date, not even the midwife, it would be 31 days from now or 30 days? 30. 30 days from now. Um, but she's thinking a little earlier because there's already signs that things are progressing and um, the ultrasound showed me ahead by a week and a half to two weeks because he was showing bigger in me. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead on this carpet and I will start showing you guys the labor prep workout. All right, so the first one is the child's pose. Um, start just the way I am. As your tummy gets bigger, you can start this from way early, 20 weeks, even earlier if you want, um, especially if you're experiencing a lot of back pain. This helps with back pain, takes a lot of pressure off your back. Another great thing and why you wanna do it is it lengthens your pelvic floor muscles. So it's kind of like stretching them and getting ready for so, this big, uh, this big push. So you're asking for all the massages, you could just done that? No, the massages work too. <laughs> they work very nice. Um, so as your tummy gets bigger, your legs will have to be a little bit more split apart. Uh, and you want to just kind of get down, try to get relaxed. Oh, that feels so good. Kind of just hold that pose for a while. You can get up, get back in. Whatever you want. Oh, but this feels so good. You just split here. <laughs> so you can't take it anymore. Uh, and you can come back up. And then get back down. You really want to start getting used to doing these workouts so that the day of labor, you can continue doing them. It keeps your body moving. When you're constantly moving during labor, it progresses things gets things going faster for you. Um, sitting in one spot is not a good idea when you're in labor. You wanna move around, but you wanna just keep doing that. Oh, I'm sorry for all the sound effects, but when you're pregnant, everything is so achy. So this feels very good on the back. Cool. The next one is a pelvic tilt. Um, you get down on your hands and knees on your fours. You want to inhale and as you inhale you're gonna round your back, tighten your uh, tighten your core. Your, it's mostly your transverse muscles what I've talked to you guys about. Um, and you can even practice your kegels while you do this which is tightening your pelvic floor muscles. Um, Alright so we're gonna get started. Now as you exhale out, bring your head up, arch your back, and then repeat.
that really helps back pain, but it also helps you engage uh, your tummy muscles. And if you are engaging your pelvic floor muscles, if you're not, I am going to have you guys do it as one of the workouts, separate aside. Um, but by being able to engage all those muscles, it starts to make it very familiar for you to know how and when to push. Um, you just, when you're pushing, but you don't know which muscles to use, which did happen on my first pregnancy. When I was in labor with Lila, I wasn't quite sure how to push, and the midwife kept telling me, push like you're pooping, which is a completely different sensation. And then, like, you hold your breath and push, which is also very wrong. You should be able to always breathe through all these exercises, and you should be able to breathe while you're pushing the baby out. You don't want to hold your breath. I had a lot of pop blood vessels all over my chest, um, over my face. I just, I looked like I naturally had purple freckles everywhere for a couple days. And that was a result of one, pushing too hard before I was ready and two, holding my breath while I was doing it. So knowing how to push is super important and the, all these breathing exercises really get you, you know, uh, ready for it. Be sure to like the video if you guys are liking these tips, if you've never heard of them before. Uh, we're gonna go on three and three is a deep squat, which is a very natural position to give birth in. Um, you can have your partner even be sitting on a chair and holding you from your armpits as you squat deeply, which I probably need that, babe. My center of gravity that's, that's has shifted, do. and I cannot really, when I squat deep, this is my deep squat, but my feet are not rested. Yep. And this can get very tiring during labor if your feet are not rested. To get my feet flat, I'm going to fall backwards. But it's okay, because I got my labor partner who will be sitting and holding me so that I can get into a much better, this is obviously much better for labor. You're very open and it's inviting, right? But you're gonna get tired if you gotta hold yourself, you know? So this is where you wanna be able to hold this position for a very long time and, and having somebody behind you will really help. This, this is good too, it's not bad, but logically, as you see how I'm sitting, it's very hard to get down in there and catch your baby as you're pushing but out here because that's how that's how we easier. deliver Lila. Like, huh that's how she came out that's how we did yeah that's how we did it for lila so i'm going to show you how to do it with just partner. against you don't want to be featured in my video <laughs> he's like no <laughs> uh imagine a person holding you there you go right and now i can keep my feet flat on the floor and that's a really good birthing position. But it is also important to be able to do regular squats. Um, if you can, this is a big boy's moment. He's like, do I come out now? <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> uh, you want to be able to do real squats. So you can practice the ones that, you know, where your feet are not quite flat. And you can practice doing them. But the day of labor, just keep in mind, hey, my feet are flat. Maybe I just need to keep doing it. I told you you were How able did to. I do it? But I was trying and trying and I couldn't unless I was fucking with myself yeah. mentally. Because I told you you should be able to relax. I was like, I can't! Yeah. <laughs> and then I haven't been able to do it. Maybe because I told myself I couldn't do it? Yeah. Dude, you just, I'm doing it. Because you could just chill there. I pride myself. <laughs> I know, I, I mean, I knew that. I but, told you. And, but you, it wasn't and you were getting mad at me. I was getting super angry. <laughs> But I was getting angry because I couldn't do it. Um, anyways, so you want to keep getting up and going down, and that's because it is going to be a lot of work. Anyways, labor is a lot of work, and this is why you want to be able to squat. Um, for everyone who thinks your baby just slips out of you if you're squatting, you're crazy. I wish it happened that way. I was squatting in a video, and someone's like, oh my god, your baby's going to fall out. I was like, dude, that would be awesome. <laughs> Can you imagine if labor was like that? <laughs> baby! Hey, we've seen some monkeys do it, innit? <laughs> Can I be that monkey? Because <laughs> for me, it was 36 freaking hours of squatting. And that baby didn't just fall out of me. That, mo oh, that monkey crazy. was savage because it ate, it that ate placenta. the placenta. I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. Although people like do capsules and take it like yeah. a supplement. That's I don't crazy. Think, I don't think we can do anything with our placenta. No, we didn't do anything with hers. It was frozen it was and we left in the apartment. We left for like two years. No, when we left the apartment. We left it there. You, oh my God, no, you did not. Yeah, forgot to throw it. Get rid of it. I know, I forgot. 
Oh my god, imagine somebody is like, because there was a lot of I was in the bag. Imagine if there was a lot of Mexican workers. Oh, you got some taco meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's horrible. I hope I hope they got rid of it. Um, anyways, going on to the next one. This little fuck just keeps coming out. <laughs> uh, okay, so these next two, um, you're, they're not so much as you're going to see so much happening. The first one is your pelvic floor muscles, which I have been telling everyone to do this. Keep doing it, guys. It is so important to engage and learn those muscles down there because it will control the labor um, and really get to know your body, get familiar with where the baby's coming out because that is where the baby's coming out from. So they're also known as Kegels. Kegels just have a bad rep. Don't really know why, but um, that's what you're doing. And I like to combine it with the second workout, which is working your transverse and your inner obliques. Um, so if you've been following me, you know what this is. If you're new, this is a workout I've been doing my entire pregnancy, which has helped um, work my inner core, keep my core strength up and, and strong so that my back doesn't hurt too much during this pregnancy. It has a lot of benefits. It makes for your uh, ab separation to be less severe and it makes for the bounce back to be a little bit faster for your core because you will be smushy after you give birth. So this all helps. Um, so by learning your transverse muscles and your inner obliques, it helps with that push because when you push, you use your core as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, stop speaking so that you can see it as it's happening. As you do this, you must be able to breathe. Always remember, remember to breathe. If you're not breathing, baby's not breathing. Because that's how baby's breathing, from the oxygen. So this is step one, okay? Step two is you want to engage your pelvic floor muscles, which is a Kegel. If you don't know what that is, or you're like, how do you engage this? It is that muscle that can stop your pee midstream. So if you're not sure where the muscle is, you're not familiar with it, go pee and try to stop your pee. That is the muscle that you are now tightening. So your tight core, you should all feel very tight here, and then you should feel tight down there. You wanna hold, hold, hold until you can't, and then you release, and then we do it again. So go ahead, hug the baby, that's what I like to call it, um, and then tighten down there as well, hold, hold, hold. Do this several times a day, and like I said, these muscles are important because if you've ever got constipated, ladies, you know, it's a thing during pregnancy, and if you look at your stomach, your stomach narrows just the way this narrows, and why is that? Because you're using your core to help push you. Same thing with this baby. You want to be able to push that kid up. Not too fast, you don't want to rip, you don't want to tear. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, you're gonna keep doing this over and over. I can't tell you the benefits. My stomach looks entirely different than with Lila's. Lila's I hung lower and further out. So imagine, this is what your body starts to do. You imagine the pain on your back, the separation happening here, because you separate the more you carry the baby out. So your ab muscles will separate, and this creates that mommy pooch. For some people, the separation will close naturally. For others, it will not. Don't be the one that doesn't, right? So the last thing you want is for your belly to be coming out. You want a strong core to hold that belly in and, and not she, be hanging out. And she was from the bottom up. She was like, yeah, she was much lower. She came out a little bit more and then it was like a slope. It's like a weird like <laughs> I just carried completely different with her. But I didn't do any ab muscle workouts because I was not sure what to do and I knew I shouldn't be doing them. Um, so anyways, I'm see, that's how easy it is. I'm like doing it without even no effort. <laughs> so the more you familiarize yourself with it, the better. It's just going to become very natural to you. So those are the other two workouts. I know they don't seem like workouts because you can do them any time of day, but this will get you ready for labor. And they should do it any time of the day. Yes, do it any time of the day. Um, for me, belly wraps did not work. They actually hurt me more than work. And I feel it's because you allow your muscles to be very lazy and not do the effort. So when I was wearing the belly wrap, although sometimes it was necessary if I, if I was already in pain, I would put it on. But I wouldn't wear it for no reason because I noticed when I took it off, I was in more pain because I wasn't like engaging my core i was just letting myself loose and hoping the belt was doing all the work for me just fine but that's also why waist trainers 
aren't a great solution, especially while you're working out, because you forget how to use your core, because you have a waist trainer on, and that waist trainer is doing the work for you. Technically, your waist is getting weaker when you work with them. I know people don't want to hear me say it, but it is what it is. Whenever you have something that like a cast, it's helping you. You're not gonna use it. This is another labor prep necessity. It's not necessarily a workout. It's more like conditioning and just kind of getting your body into a sway. Like during birth, you know, you have to have that repetition of breathing, humming. I would hum a lot, which would really help like when I would feel bad. Um, so it's kind of like a, a movement that helps, but having a medicine ball is so important. I had it for, for her when I was con uh, getting contractions. I would first just use it kind of to lay on, um, and he would rub my lower back. And you would just kind of sit there and hum and go back and forth. Just kind of like meditate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so you're meditating and you're getting through these contractions, and it's a perfect spot for him to just get in and really massage down very close to your butt. That's where a lot of pressure will happen. Um, and okay. he's pretty much like, <laughs> it sounds really aggressive, but you got to be really aggressive down there. It's not like a light little, oh, whatever, rub. It's like he's really pushing it deep. Um, so that's one thing you can do with a medicine ball. Um, what you can do throughout the day, if you just feel kind of out of place or your hips feel out of place or something hurts, you can just sit here and do like little rotations, which really helps with hip pain, back pain, and even for labor. Like I said, you can hum, get yourself into like a whole mood. So this is more, it's not a workout, but it's conditioning and it's very soothing. Um, and like I said, if like he has a, a thing where he taps, like either his hand or his leg is always like, you know, especially the more nervous you get, you have that one thing that helps. This is kind of that one thing that helps during labor because you don't know what else to do with all that pain. So you sit and you want to focus. It's something, and something you have control just, over of doing yeah. back and forth. Um, so having a medicine ball is definitely helpful. I know some facilities will have them available. If not, bring your own. If you're doing it in a hospital or something, mine is being done at home, so I've got my medicine ball. Um, and also the size this is a good size, because the one we have was really small. Well, this one is good for if you're tall. Yeah. You need a size down if you're not as tall as me, because uh, somebody shorter mm. might not have the, like, like I have good, like, length. To the floor but if you're smaller you might not have and this it. is a size 30. no 75. 25. so it's 55 65 75 and they go all the way up to 85 but that's like for taller like i think men that are much taller um and i, I think it was 65 60? or 75. i think 60. i don't know i i can always we'll put check. it in the description of the video but yeah so it's more of a conditioning a therapeutic thing that you need but yeah totally totally get it it's a game changer i was like attached to my little blue ball which is not even as great as this gray one and it made all the difference for me even lila loves it uh, yeah the labor day is mine though okay <laughs> she's just sitting there so <laughs> take, she's like watching me like to get out early so that way yeah. they could be sick of it <laughs> so a movie i'm i'm what you you saw a movie oh it's a movie <laughs> she's watching me like a movie <laughs> Yeah, you're so cute. And and my friend here. Oh, and your friend is there. Oh, cute. Her little elf. <laughs> it says her name on it. Yeah. <laughs> my other tip. This is a big one. Labor prep tea, which is really just red raspberry tea. Contrary to what it sounds like, because that sounds yummy, red raspberry leaf tea. Doesn't that just sound like delicious? Yeah. It's not, but this one is. If you've ever tasted it, just plain without everything they add in it to make it taste really good, it tastes horrible. <laughs> uh, so I highly recommend this one. This is the only one that I can drink and actually enjoy. They just add natural ingredients. I think they use stevia um, to like sweeten it and some other stuff. Um, I love this brand. I even take their prenatals too. And something else which I forgot. They have a whole bunch of teas. Fertility trees after postpartum. Uh, recovery but this one is really good I highly recommend it um, and this one you want to start drinking 
in your second trimester. Don't drink it in your first trimester. Drink it in your second trimester about a cup a day. When you get in your third trimester, you can drink it about two a day. And when you get to those 37 weeks, drink three a day, which really tones your uterus. That's what my midwife likes to call it. But really what it's doing is it's gonna make your contractions more effective. So um, also make sure you're hydrated the day of labor. If you're dehydrated, your contractions are not going to be as effective or strong. You're just going to be in pain for a really long time. So hydrated, drink your tea, and yeah, all will be good. Good luck, mamas who are going to endure this pain very soon, just like me. <laughs> uh, if you're not going to do it anytime soon, well, either way, prep. Prepping is so important. Um, but yeah, this wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to leave your comments below. I'm more than happy to answer. And if I can't answer, hopefully somebody else has an answer for you. But use it as a community. Use the comment section as a community. Be sure to like the video because that always helps out the channel. It helps me out. Um, it helps the algorithm because YouTube is kind of weird. Instagram is kind of weird. So any engagement always helps. Anyways, until next time. Hopefully it's not Labor Day. Yeah. But <laughs> until next time, bye y'all.